What is going on guys? This is Riyad here again with a new game crew tutorial. Our today's project is about uh, networking. So we're going to make a chat system, alright? So um, we're going to be dealing with buffers and sockets and stuff like that. So if it's your first uh, time dealing with those stuff, then don't worry. I'll be explaining every single thing. So, first of all, we need a client and server as objects, and of course, a room, alright? So, in order to make this chat system, we need a server and a client, so the client can connect to the server, and then, um, so basically, every client is going to send um, a message to the server, and the server's uh, mission is to actually send the the message that he got from a client to every other um, client or player is connected to the server alright it's actually very simple so now uh, let's start with the server alright let's add a create event and now you know first of all let's actually make some global variables where's the script okay Alright, and I like to call it global edit. Alright, so first of all, we need uh, a port. So let's say global.server port equals any port you want, and of course, the port for the client. Alright, oops, client. Uh, we need an IP address. And actually, that's all we need to have right now. So, let's go back to the server and in the create event, let's add some variables. So, here we're going to initialize um, the server. So, um, it's so to create server, it's very simple. You just need to do network create server. Alright? I believe it takes three parameters. Now the first one is the type, and we're going to deal with TCP. So network type TCP. Oh wait, I think it's socket TCP. All right. Now the port is actually the port that you want to connect to. In this case, it is uh, server port. And uh, the max client. Now for uh, for now, we're gonna have like four clients. Can have any number you want here. All right, and you're also going to have a buffer. So let's create a chat buffer. You call it buffer create. Um, right. So the size. Uh, just type this size here. I actually think it's. Uh, let me just. So the type I usually work with buffer grow and the alignment is one. Alright, so a buffer is actually a piece of memory. Alright, so we're gonna we're going to use the buffer to save a piece of data in it, and then we're going to send the buffer to all the clients so they can extract from it the data that it has. Alright, so um, now. We're going to oh, actually wait. We need one more thing here, and that's um, actually two things. So first of all, is a map for the client. So client equals this map create, and we also need a list for the socket. This list create, all right? Very simple. Now let's add um, networking event, and you know actually it's. Let's actually go to the uh, client first and connect to the server so things won't be actually very complicated. Alright, so here we're going to connect to the server. So first of all we need, uh, the client need a socket. 
Alright, so the socket is like... Um, I know how to describe it, but his mission is to actually send the buffer to the server. That That's all that it does. Um, yeah, so socket is... Um, network create socket. Oh, no. What is it? Network socket TCP, I guess. No, 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 no. It's not like that. Network. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually created soggy. I don't know why. I... Anyway. Uh, so the type is the same. So we're gonna work with TCP. So network socket TCP. Alright. And we need a buffer. So network create buffer. What's the matter? Really? Oh, it's actually buffer create what I'm doing. Type is actually buffer grow, and the alignment is one. And then let's connect to the server. So network connect. So the first parameter is the socket. The URL is actually the IP, right? And the port is the port basically. So in this case, it's client port. Now uh, I really recommend you to check if if we actually connected this server. So let's do something. If connect not equal zero, so that means that connection fails. So show message cannot connect to server and game restart and make sure to actually destroy. Um, the socket, or actually, it's network destroy socket. All right, it's actually network destroy here socket, and so the buffer. So buffer delayed buffer. Otherwise, um. Let's make two more, um, wait, so senders equals this list create, so this list will, um, will handle the player's name, so, uh, messages is this list create, um, so basically, we're going to, um, uh, so each client will have a name, and when he sends the message, his name will be stored in this list, while his message will be oh my God, I can't talk. While his message will be stored in this list, all right. So senders is um, for names. What's that? And messages basically for you know messages. Right, and we also need uh, one more variable here is global.socket we go socket okay now let's go back to server and in the networking event we're going to um, well first of all we need a temporary variable is event id so um, game maker has his own map that's called async load and um, it helps you with dealing with asynchronous events so in the networking so this value here from the map ID will return actually um, how did this event uh, trigger it so if event ID basically is from the server 
basically that means someone uh, someone is trying to connect or someone is trying to disconnect all right else if um, if event ID equals global dot socket and global dot socket is our local socket basically so in this case we're gonna anyway because we, 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 uh, we don't need to actually send or receive data from our local socket or client basically else that means uh, this event is triggered from other clients that are not even in our uh, uh, PC or it, it's like it can can actually be in your PC if you open it to uh, two games at the same time but I think you get the point so here um, we're going to receive data from other clients right so first of all here we need um, two more variables first of all is the socket and we're going to do the same thing that we did here except we're going to change this to socket right? we're also going to get a type so these variables are automatically stored in GameMaker's map that's called async load right? so we're just, we're just getting the value and here is the type so as I told you if uh, the server event is triggered, that means someone is trying to connect or disconnect. So, uh, how, we, how we can know that? Basically, this variable will tell us. So, if type equals network type connect, that means someone is trying to connect to the server. Else, if type equals disconnect, then someone is disconnecting from the server. So what's, what what we're going to do? Um, as I told you, we have a list of sockets. So let's uh, add our socket, actually the player, the new player socket that is connecting to our socket list. So that's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, and we also um. We are also going to add this socket to our map. So, our map is for our client, and the key here is their socket. And for the value here, um, for now, let's let's leave it as none. But um, you know, if you actually have a game where, like, I don't know, multiplayer platform or top down then here I really recommend you to actually store like obj player for a uh, val for this map alright so um, I think I will do um, I don't know maybe top down multiplayer game or platform if you wanna see that then let me know in the comments but anyway uh, so and here, if someone is trying to disconnect, so we're gonna we're going to uh, remove the socket from the list. And as you can see here, we can't actually do something like uh, this list delete and then socket because this parameter here is actually the position, not the value. All right, so we're going to find the uh, the position of the current socket. So what we're going to do is actually store it in this temporary variable index, which is this list of find index. Alright, sockets and socket. Alright, so here, index. And of course we're going to uh, remove it from the map. So this map uh, remove, I think. Nope, delete. Alright. Um, client socket and as I told you before if you have like a variable here or a, an object stored in this uh, value then make sure to destroy it alright uh, so that's pretty much it for um, connecting or disconnecting from the server so and here um, 
here we're going to actually um, you know deal in with the data that is received from the other client so you're also going to need one more variable and that's the buffer right but first of all so right now we don't have any data that can be sent to the server so what we're going to do is once the client is created then we're going to ask him for a name right so name equals get string um, name and um, you know let's just leave it blank here and so chat message empty string here right and um, yeah for now let's just leave it like that but in the step event let's add a step event here um right so send the message to the server right so uh, let's make script here so send chat message all right so this script will take two arguments so the name and the message so first of all while dealing with buffers make sure to uh make sure that that we are writing in the buffer from the very beginning so how to do that we're going to type this functions here buffer c then choose your buffer which is buffer for uh, this client and then buffer seek start so this is basically the where you want to start the uh, fill in the buffer so most of the case you wanna do something like that buffer seek start right and um, so here we're going to send like an ID for what are we going to do um, for the idea, I re recommend you to make it uh, as an integer buffer and sign it eighth bit integer. And here uh, is actually chat or something. So let's make this constant here. And you're gonna see how we can how is this useful. All right. So forget about that for now, and let's send two more data. But um they are string right so here is argument argument zero and argument one now to, to send the uh, so right now we have a buffer and in this buffer we have three data the first one is an ID all right for the chat the second one is the player name basically and the last one is just uh, you know basically the message that uh, yeah the message that, that's all I think you can figure it out and uh, so yeah to send this buffer to the server the only thing we need to do is network send packet and what's that? Alright, so the socket is our socket. So as I told you, the socket's job is to send um, the buffer to the server. That's all. So in order to send the packet to the server, you need a socket to do that. The buffer ID here is our buffer that we are filling in. And the size to know the size of the buffer, you just need to um, type in buffer tail. So this function will, will return the size of uh, any buffer you type here. All right, so that's pretty much it. So uh, for quick testing, in the step event, let's uh, let's do something like if keyboard check pressed, I don't know vertical key space. Then um, message you go get string message all right and then f 
message um, it's if string length oh is greater than one that means so uh, the user will not actually send an empty message so that would make any sense then uh, let's send his chat message so the first parameter is the name the second one is his message right so message get string uh, yeah so that's all I need to do now but um, it's not actually a good way to get a message from the from the client by get string because this function will actually stops the game loop yep so keep that in mind while dealing with any actually asynchronous events do not use get string or get integer or show message though so these functions will actually freeze the game loop so what that means is um, let's say that we have more like four clients in the server so when this uh, message appear to actually to get an input from the client the data that is sending that the server will send us to our client from other clients will not actually be received because this at this moment our game loop will be uh, will not work basically all right so we're going to change this later but for now let's just it's for basic testing all right so now here with the server um so first of all we need to know the command or the ID of the received message so that's why we have sent like chat ID here or whatever you call it so because in most case uh, you can't use a bu you can use a buffer for sending anything you, you, you want so that's why I recommend you here so the first um, data you send is an ID right so here we're going to actually read oh my God. read the data. So in this case is the buff buffer here that we got from the async load map and the type is buffer you wait. See if you remember then the key is uh, a buffer u8. So now we're going to check if cmd equals chat then what are we going to do is get the name of the sender and that's by buffer read the next string that we send all right and then oh what's that oh And the next variable is uh, the message, right? So it's also a string. Now, um, what are we going to do here? Is send those two data to the client itself, all right? So actually, we're going to send it to all the clients, not only our clients. So for var for var i equals zero i is less than ds list size socket i plus plus so here we're going to look for for every client that is in the game and now what we're going to do is socket uh, so for shortcut equals uh, ds list find value socket i Right, and now we're going to send the uh, yeah. So with the shed buffer, um, so buffer seek chat buffer. So this buffer is in the server. Chat buffer. Um, now the base uh, is actually buffer seek start. And offset is zero. So uh, buffer right here. Just 
jet buffer. The type is actually buffer U8. Uh, and here we're going to send the the same ID here in the shed. So um as you may know or so you can use actually here more than one buffer. <coughs> so it's actually good practice to send the job or what what's actually the type of this data that we're going to get from the buffer before actually sending it so we can actually deal with it easily I know this this may not make any sense for you but um, actually ah, what I can say yeah, so just do that because um, I think you can understand this very clear right now because actually we, we only have one buffer and we're not sending too much data but um, yeah just deal with that anyway um so here um we're going to fill we're going to fill here both of the name uh, of the sender and um, his message. Alright. And as I told you to send the uh, Alright, so to send the uh, those data to the client, the only thing we need to do to do here is type the socket of each client. That's we why we have a for loop here. Alright, so socket, the buffer ID is um, chat buffer. This size, as I told you, is buffer tail and buffer chat or chat buffer. So that's pretty much it. So now, um, I think that's all for the server. Now we need to go to the client, asynchronous event, networking. And here we get the data from the server. So we're going to do the same thing here. Event ID equals the, uh, DS map. Find value. Async load. The key here is ID. That's pretty much it. Now if event ID equals uh, socket. That um, var buffer equals eight equals this map find value buffer. Okay. Now, as I told you, we need a command here, a temporary variable to see what's the which buffer we use to send this data that we are receiving right now. So. It's very simple. We need to just read the the first the first uh, piece of data, which is the ID. So in this case, buffer read um, buffer, and then the type is buffer u8. So if cmd equals chat. Then uh, we know that we are receiving two more data. So that's why I told you to uh, send an ID for of the buffer. So now we're gonna need we're going to read the data from the from the buffer. So the only thing we need to do is pretty simple, just read the data buffer. Uh, it's a string. Right, and the message, and it's the same thing. All right. The next thing we need to do is this list add senders and the buffer string is um, the name. 
also going to add uh, a message for this user. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Now, to see if things are working correctly, let's add um, draw event. Of course, actually, we're gonna have draw event. So, draw set color C white. And now, for var i equals 0, i is less than uh, this list, find value. Mm, what's the, okay. So, um, senders. i plus plus. So, hmm, what's the. Oh, actually, yes, I saw it's what I'm doing. Alright, um, so draw text zero, zero plus thirty two times i, and string is uh, this list find value senders i plus uh, two points here plus this list find value message that's pretty much it and um, all right so now we need uh, like a menu just to you know so it's a step event here let's see if keyboard check pressed the virtual key uh, if you press the H button, then we're going to create the server. Instance create zero zero server. Oh my god, what am I talking about? Hmm. Then we need to create the server and so the client and destroy the menu. Alright. If you want to join a server, then we just need to create the client. Alright. So um, let's put this uh, menu here. Oh, menu. It's a black background for you know once you can read the uh, text right there. And let's see how many errors we have. You know, because it's actually weird to type all this without actually making a mistake and uh, you know. So here I'm going to press H and server port. Hmm. Interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. So we need uh, another room in it, and in the creation code, it's called the uh, it's called the script that has the global variables. All right, and make sure to go to the next row, and also make sure that it's the first row we have. So, but to you know, to work. that's it. We need to more than one client. So, um, let's go back to the where is it? desktop and for quick testing, it's a single runtime. By the way, if you wanna actually connect to uh, a server that is not running on your computer, 
then you just need to uh, change the um, this IP right here so you can do something like global IP equals get string um, for you who don't know if you are if you want to connect to a server that's in your same uh, network then you just need to type ipconfig alright so this is for example this is my IP local IP so yeah so you need to know this IP of this server then you're gonna type it if you wanna run it on uh, a server if you wanna connect to the server that it's not on your uh, it's not on your local you know network then you need something called uh, external IP and the the machine that is running the server must have this port forwarded alright so that's pretty much it let's see if uh, yeah. so this is the first client alright so I'm gonna press here H Alright, so the server will start. Come on. So for the name, this is my name, and here, let's press G. So let's try to, yeah. Hmm, interesting. For some reason, it didn't work. Hmm. Let me just see what the matter. Sorry guys, this is not so S O C K. It's S O. I'm really sorry. So that's why. You know. Because um, I'm just. Because you know this. Uh, Socket means actually the, the socket that is sending the server, ah, the message I mean. So the sending the message to the same socket won't make any sense, right? Um, did it? Um, yep, I think we can run it now. Okay, so let's host. So I was talking about doing something like this. So here, the message is open for this client, and when we try to send this message here, like I don't know, just random stuff, it won't send. That's actually because the the game loop for this for the server is not working, right? So that's why I do not recommend you to actually. Um, doing that so you see after closing the message we will send and so I think you get the point so what I really recommend you to do let's see how many mm, I don't know maybe we're gonna do it in another tutorial part two but yeah this was all for today guys don't forget to like subscribe and if you wanna see any other tutorial then let me know and yeah, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.